Uh, I don't really feel like running today. I actually do, but it's just, it's time for a change of scenery. This place, it's, it's just a circle. And honestly, it's just getting really boring. I'm going to try a different park and do incline today. I'm sure this is very fascinating to all of you. Hopefully there'll be pretty things to see. Ooh, but do I have bug spray? Okay, I have bug spray. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go try something different today. It's the first thing I see when I get here. And I'm looking at this map and it's really not very helpful. This is, like, could they put a, this is where you are or something on here. Yeah, I'm not doing all that, no way. There's a trail I used to do here. It was close to the parking lot and it went up and it looked over the river. But if this is that blue trail, that's nowhere near the river. So that's why I'm confused. Unless maybe I'm like here or something. Park office. I'm near the park office. Where's that? Right there. Well, that means I'm like over here. I'm so confused. I just wanted to do something more intense today. Not necessarily with the cardio, but with going uphill. Because uh, it's supposed to be in the triple digits very soon. It's probably going to stay that way for a while. When it gets that hot, I exercise through swimming. So I want to do something with more impact to help, you know, build up that booty. I'm looking over the signs because I haven't been here in a while. I have some bug spray on me, but my can was almost empty. Bears. Ugh. We have bears now. A bear was just sighted out here. That's new here. I mean, they used to live here, but we killed them all like a hundred years ago or something. So it's good that they're back, but I don't have no bear spray. Snakes, poison ivy. I'm gonna stay on the trail, so that shouldn't really be an issue. Should be fine to avoid the ticks, stay on the path, all that fun stuff. Here are the things that we encounter. I'm not doing all that. I'm just going up a hill and coming back down. That's all I feel like doing. And that noise you were hearing in the background a little while ago was uh, like a mower powerful mower thing so the trail should be pretty fresh that's kind of nice there were some deer in here do you guys know that I'm like slightly afraid of deer by slightly I mean like I really I appreciate them from a distance they're majestic creatures and whatever but something about them freaks me out I don't know why not like like I'm not gonna run and hide from them or anything like that but just when I'm driving because they'll just run right out in front of you why do I feel like I'm going the wrong direction already I should be seeing a cliff. I don't know. I'm going to give this a couple minutes. If it doesn't start to look familiar, I'm turning around. I'm going to try something different. Yeah. This is where I was supposed to be. It's only like a five minute walk from where I parked, so not a big deal. I don't think you can tell that this is a heavy incline. If I remember right, though, the view from the top is well worth it. Holy crap. That was way more intense than just running. Oh, look at this view. Oh, that seems really dangerous. Let's go check it out. Whew. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm really high right now. Up high. Very high. Oh, it's gorgeous. Absolutely beautiful. I'm like an observation deck. It's still pretty. I kind of liked it better on top of the rock, though. Also, there's a train down there that's coming to a stop. That's kind of weird in the middle of the woods. How beautiful this tree is. Don't know why. I think it's the roots. Whew. I'm not going down there. Nope. Finally home. That was a really intense workout. Lots of inclines. I feel good though. <laughs> Tomorrow, probably not so much. So uh, before I go ahead and take a shower, I figure I may as well get the dirty stuff done. I planted another Thai giant right here. Where are you? What are you so excited about? Where are you doing? There's nobody here. Put another Thai giant there. I have a castor bean back here that's kind of sad, but recovering okay. Uh, I just, I didn't get it in the ground in time when that last heat wave came through. So I have that. I have one more Thai giant. Another castor bean. This variety is called uh, Zanzivarensis. Zanzivarensis? They call it castor Z. 
it's one of the larger varieties. Really nice veining in here. It's kind of an orange hint to it. Uh, of course, toxic, so not for people with children or animals that chew on things. I typically wouldn't buy castor beans. They're very easy to grow from seed, but these were already nice big plants and the grower had them for dirt cheap, so went ahead, I got a couple. Uh, the plan was to have one here and then one in a planter in the driveway, but with this heat wave coming up, I just don't see them adjusting well to that, that kind of heat. Uh, not in the driveway, not with the pavement and everything. And I'm kind of thinking that that particular planter would do better with maybe something a little bit more refined and, I don't know, permanent? Because the pot has a shape to it where once something's rooted in there, it's not coming out. Now, of course, it would make sense to go ahead and put the other one of the Thai Giants right here in this gap. Gap? I feel like I said that weird. But if I do that, it's really going to get big and block all the stuff behind it and shade things out too much. You're not going to be able... The hibiscus isn't in bloom right now, but when it is, it's very pretty. Uh, that's... I don't, I don't think I want to do that. So I may end up putting it down here, which is where I have this pineapple lily sitting. This is the Zulu flame variety, which I really like because it has really thick paddle-shaped leaves with nice speckling in there. Very tropical looking. And perennial, so maybe I will put that over here, like kind of like where that shovel is. This is going to look much better in a week or so. Finally got some new growth popping out of the sky. Need to get its roots regenerated and... Uh, that sago palm. Had a rough winter. But yeah, I think that may work right there. Because I have two Thai Giants right here. Really teeny tiny ones that were very expensive from Logies. Stumbled upon these from another local grower for cheaper and much, much, much larger. Thought it would look nice to have two here and kind of two over here, but I'm just not going to be able to frame them in quite right. Which, I don't, I don't know if that really matters. I just feel like this is going to be way too close to the path to have a Thai Giant, and there's a little needle palm in there that I just excavated. It got buried when this hole was dug for the queen palm, so I, I don't, I just, that, I don't know. It doesn't seem like a great idea. Basically, I just spent three minutes telling you guys that I, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing. That's all that is. Hi. What are we gonna do with you? What are, you, what are we gonna do with you? You're not safe here. Oh, oh, your ass can fly? You really need to get moving then. I know it's hard to see, but I actually have a hole dug here. It's also the next day. It started to rain and storm and whatnot, so here we are. But this got blown over because, you know, it's incredibly top-heavy. Like I was just saying in the previous clip, this is the uh, Castor Beans and the uh, I think it's also called Castor Z. Very large variety. One of the largest, I believe. I um, think about 8 feet tall or so. Maybe taller than that. I can't remember. But look at how responsive this is to sunlight. The wind knocked it over yesterday and it's already, you know, bent from being on its side, uh, which is fine. It'll shoot right back up where it needs to be. So that's good. Have my hole dug. I put some, I did put some soil release fertilizer in there and I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that in. I have a problem, common problem that I have all the time. As you all know, I, uh, I can be kind of indecisive. That's just, that's just the way it is. Welcome to my channel. The issue I'm having here is, is it raining? It's raining. Okay, well, I guess I'm done for now. I'm going to go through this real quick, but my computer's outside, so I have to hurry. This spot right here, I have this oleander that was in the pot that broke that I need to get that in the ground or repotted. I think I'm just going to stick it in the ground. It would look nice there. I don't think there's enough contrast between the blue dune grass and then these skyrocket junipers, which are not looking great because we had a bad winter. Uh, I think it might just kind of blend in there and look messy. I have this other Thai giant. I had planned on putting it in here. My worry is it's going to get too big, shade things, and I don't want anything growing into the side of these junipers because that's how you get dead spots. So that's what I'm trying to figure out is what to put where. Also, I'm not confident that this Chinese fan palm is doing well in this location. I don't think I was able to build enough soil up around the root ball. That may have to go too. But as for right now, it's raining, so I guess I have time to contemplate this because it looks like it's going to rain for quite a while. Ah, that's all right. You need the rain very, very, very badly. Oh, did I show you guys what happened at Toys R Us? <laughs> I'll insert a clip right here.
Wasn't that cute? I need to finish my thought though, real quick. So what I was saying, I don't want the elephant ear up against the juniper over there. And I was thinking this would be a good spot right here, like I mentioned before, but that will block this hibiscus. Also, root mass of this queen palm, it's, is the timer not working again for, oh, I have it on a sensor timer, so it must think it's dark out. I think I might need to do something about that. The root mass of this palm tree is impenetrable. Also, sorry about the noise. I don't, I have no idea what's going on up there, but it's been very loud the last couple of days. Like, what is that sound? It sounds like crashing in water. I don't know, figure out what it is. I can't dig where the actual root mass of the queen palm is. I've tried, I've used a pickaxe, I've used a saw, I've, I mean, a really expensive knives. It's, it's not happening. So that's why I have this pineapple just kind of sitting in this pot here. I think that that works just fine, kind of fill in that gap. And not every gap needs to be filled, but I want this to like really be a standout area. But that's what's happening there. Since I think, I think I just covered all of the things that are bogging my mind down. I'm not sure. There's always something. It finally stopped raining, but it's so humid out. My camera's all wet. It's uh, got a lot of condensation on it. That's not gonna work for filming. So I've just been sitting out here with the fan blowing on it, trying to get it warmed up. Maybe I should let the lens out so air can get in there a little bit. I feel like, you know, that moisture is probably not good for the camera. But it's not that humid. It's only like 75, 80%, which is pretty humid. But I mean, St. Louis in the summertime, it can it gets very humid. This shouldn't do that. Anyways, I was uh, going to film a video because I felt like it was too late to plant stuff over there. But now, like I've been waiting forever and it's getting dark. I was hoping to film this while the sun was setting because it gets like a really pretty pinky orange over there. But it's not, things just aren't working out that way. So maybe while this is doing its thing, I'll go ahead and work on this a little bit. I don't know why this area has been such a thorn in my side. It's just like a roadblock in my head. Like I just can't figure out what I'm supposed to do, which is weird because I had it all planned out and it was looking good. So I don't know why, I mean, it wasn't looking that good. I'd like for it to look better. There's more that needs to be done here. How are you thirsty? It rained for like five hours. Really? Well. You're kind of sensitive. You should be embarrassed. And look, the soil's wet. Oh, you can't see that. The ground's wet. I don't know what your problem is. I'm not watering you right now, though. You have to wait till morning. So I decided I'm going to go ahead and put this tie giant right there. So there'll be one there, one there, one here, and one here. These are the much smaller ones from Logie's. And uh, at this point, I ain't just stop talking about it and just do it, right? Sometimes you just, just gotta get moving. Just get moving and things start to come together. Hopefully. Oh, I bet the mosquitoes are gonna be really bad right now, too. Okay, that like literally took maybe a minute and a half. Threw that down there and I put a Chinese fan. I'll show you all this in the morning. There's no point. It's dark. And I prefer to not plant things at nighttime because it's really more difficult to water them in, but. The ground's a little bit wet. I didn't break the root balls up too much. They should be okay. It's the next day. Finally ready to get out here and finish things up and uh, well, can you hear that? Can you hear that? Those are the tornado sirens. So, guess uh, take another mulligan for the day. It is what it is. Just Mother Nature is going to do what Mother Nature does. What's wrong with my camera? It's like, whoa. I am going to go ahead and absolutely drench this pot because it got blown over during the last storm and I got lucky it didn't break. Don't want to take that risk again. The, oh, the, it's the, the weight of the water. Weighs a lot. Help, hopefully will help anchor the pot down. Well, it's the next day. No damage. But, uh, yeah. Still bad weather. It just, it just won't stop. Not that I'm complaining. We've needed the rain and we're getting plenty of it now. Kind of. Everything's kind of going right along the edge of where I live, so... Everybody just a little bit east of us is actually getting most of the rain. Either way, we're getting some, so that's good. But uh, hey, you know what? I think 
have to take a mulligan for this week's vlog because it just it didn't happen things didn't come together i have to have this edited and ready to go up so i gotta end things even though like nothing happened i, mean, I started some projects which is great but ultimately just wasn't able to get things done whether the weather and my schedule they just didn't go together and that's all right uh, but don't click away yet. There's still something I want to do. And uh, in a couple days there will be a garden tour, so that'll be lengthy. But I have some plants here and I figured we could go ahead and do a plant haul. I was going to do it in a separate video. I will use my other camera since it's dark as evening, but it's like the middle of the afternoon. So that way it'll show up better, but I picked up some natives. Like I said, it's going to be a separate video, but we can we can do it here. That's fun. It's more laid back and casual that way. Something else I can do. These old fronds from last year are driving me crazy. You need to go. Right on my head, apparently. There's that one, and there's this one. This has gone ahead and flushed out two new branches, so it's breaking even. It's fine. I can live with that. That's not the end of the world. But yeah, those have been driving me crazy. Every time I take a picture or do anything, and there's those dead burnt tips in them. Ugh. So ugly. You nasty. Gosh, do you guys see? Look at the sky. Very menacing. And since we have all this rain, may as well go ahead and put down some fertilizer. I had mentioned there are some signs of some deficiencies in these adenidias. And uh, this Espoma palm tone works pretty well. Only problem, this foliage has gotten so dense I can't really work it into the soil. So I'm just going to kind of have to rely on the pressure of the hose to hopefully go ahead and work it down in there. Unfortunately, that's really just about all I can do. I can't, you know, take a little hand trowel or hand rake and loosen the surface up. It's just going to have to work its way in. Just, just the way it is. And this isn't the most complete palm fertilizer out there, but the levels are at a low enough rate that I'm not afraid to use it. And it's got all kinds of good things to help get a good biosystem, a good ecosystem of bacterias and things going in your soil so that the plant can uptake nutrition more efficiently and break things down more efficiently. The magnesium is really what I want to see. It's not a crazy high level, but that's about where most of them are going to be for palm fertilizers. I may still need to add iron. The sulfur, meh, no, I still will probably have to add some chelated iron at some point. But like I said, this is, uh, it's pretty good. I've always had pretty good results with using the Spoma Palm Tone. Said I was going to update with what had happened down here when it was daytime, but we have, it hasn't, it hasn't been daytime in a couple days. But essentially I moved a Chinese Fan Palm down here. I did the Thai Giant over there. I'm sure you guys are really over this whole section, so when I'm really ready to, like, get to it, I'll do it quicker, more professionally. Sorry I spent so much time yabbering about this area. I think that that's just a bad leaf on the castor bean. That's the only thing I can figure. I don't know why it's all eh, like that, but the rest of the foliage is fine. But what made me remember to come over here was I was just pruning the palm tree. The sago palm, that growth has really come out, has some brown in it, which isn't great, you know? Like there may have at some point been some type of rot starting to develop inside of the trunk, but it's okay. It's it's doing fine through it. It's Since everything below the brown is green, I'm not really as concerned. But I don't want to trim the old foliage off yet because this is all that's there to take in chlorophyll. Those haven't opened yet, so that's the same reason I waited with the adenidia palm because I had to have whatever chlorophyll was available to put out new spears, and so that was important. But now that it's put out two more, then those other two could go, finally. And that's going to be the same thing with this. Once these flush out, I can cut this stuff off. And I can do more in here. And really within about a week's time, that should be up. And then I can do more over here. This just this has just been, it's in my way and it's driving me crazy. I don't think the new foliage is going to flush out to this size. That was when it was getting more shade. I've moved it to more sun. So that's what that's about. Also, somebody commented saying that they would like some orchid updates. I haven't really done anything with my orchids, like in videos, because they, they're not really doing anything. Like they're good, they're growing. Haven't really lost anything. Nothing's... They're just, they're just here. They're just existing. So I do, I need to fertilize and do some things with them. But for the most part, you know, they're okay. Oh, this video. This video, I have been like, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to come back to it later. Now I'm going to do this. And then I come back to it. Been all over the place. I'm so sorry. I mean, no, I'm not. Someone said I apologize too much. I'm not sorry. Just kidding. I'm a little bit sorry. It's probably annoying. Uh, the Vandas. They're, they're good. I think there might be a couple spikes on some of them. But for the most part, they're just 
here doing their thing. I'll do a more in-depth update next week. Is anybody else out there obsessed with Persicaria? This isn't Persicaria. What are you? Persian shields. So pretty. It looks like some kind of bug was chewing on you. But you're still fancy. They're just sexy, shiny plants. I love shiny things. And they're so, they're like iridescent. It doesn't show as much on camera. But if you ever have the opportunity to grab one of these from your nurseries, they're generally pretty cheap. These were, I think, like $3 a piece. I paid retail for those. They weren't from a wholesaler. And uh, yeah, they, they grow really well, too. They're pretty good for part sun to part shade. I think you can even take them up to sun if you irrigate them properly, but I'm not positive on that. They do, like, they've scorched a little bit when it got really hot, and there's not a lot of sun right here. But yeah, look, look. This, they're just so pretty, so shiny. They're much more purple in person. All right, let's go ahead and dig into the plant hall. The picture is gonna be different now and so is the audio. And my little, there's like a poof ball thing that goes over my microphone and I can't find, I mean, I know where it is. I just, I don't feel like getting it. I picked up these native plants from one of my local nurseries. I do as much as, you know, it's a tropical plant party. There's a lot of plants in my garden that really do not belong where I live. I still like to incorporate natives when possible. Usually every year I buy a few new ones and I throw them into my butterfly or pollinator garden, which is an area I guess I haven't really shown you guys or talked to you about much. That's because it's honestly an area I just sort of let go wild. I don't really do much with it. Also, pardon this trellis. The wind keeps coming and going, so I was like, I'm just gonna leave it if it's just gonna keep blowing over. I feel like none of this is in focus. Is anybody else noticing that or is it just because my little, my screen's so tiny? I can't tell. Anyways, I picked some of these guys up. You know, I've been out running and hiking and doing these things a few times a week, and it's intrigued me with a lot more of the native plants. And when I saw this huge selection at my nursery, I was like, I'm gonna go ahead and get more than just like one or two this year. I didn't do a ton of research on them, which is something I never really suggest, but they're plants that all looked familiar. So I was like, yeah, I'm sure it's fine. But the first one is this indigo bush. That's this guy right here, the Amorpha fructosa. Let's go ahead and show you the plant and read it to you. The tag does not want to stay in focus. The leaves are starting to close up as they do at nighttime, similar to a mimosa. It has a nice shape to it. I actually thought, you know, I could maybe even pot this up and keep it trained to have a really nice, cool, kind of bonsai-like shape. Oh, it's just so dark out, nothing wants to focus. There's that guy, indigo flowers bloom May and June, a medium sized shrub for landscaping, wildlife seed and cover, host to silver spotted skippers, I don't know what that means, whatever it is, I hope it doesn't bite and I hope it doesn't itch, handles dry conditions, sun to part shade and average moist soil, height 6 to 10 feet, space 5 to 8 feet. Yeah, it, it's something that looks like it grows up with kind of like a vase shape. And I really, I think that I'm gonna have fun with, Surprise. I, and I really do think I'm gonna have some fun with this plant, even though it is very sassy and will not focus. Next up is this prairie dog, which is Sylphium terra dip 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 I, there's no way, I'm not gonna be able to pronounce that. I know, probably doesn't look that neat, but I've seen these when I've been out hiking and they look really cool when they get bigger. Really, really cool. These are an excellent large foliage plant with leaves shaped like elephant ears. Tall flowering stems appear in August through September. They like sun to light shade. Leaves 16 to 24 inches tall. Flowering stems 3 to 6 feet tall. And it only gets about 2 to 3 feet wide. And they like dry to average soils. These will produce large seed heads that attract finches and other songbirds. The large leaves provide excellent bulb texture and perennial borders. Neat. It's kind of a cool looking plant. And here we have a sensitive fern. Onsilicidatalaba sensilibus fern. Two to three feet tall and wide shade uh, or just a little bit of sun. Oh, and that's what it looks like. That's kind of important. These are a cool fern. I like the shape of the leaves. It's not like your typical fern. I mean, it is your typical fern shaped leaf. It's the fact that it's like pinnate, but uh, the it has broader lobes on it, which I think is pretty cool and kind of exotic looking. Since it's a native, I would think it will do better than a lot of other ferns do because I, I always struggle to find ferns that can handle the extreme hot temperatures of the summer as well as the really cold, wet winters. Although this winter was very dry, but it was extremely cold. Ferns are out there, they exist. It's just, I also like them to be somewhat evergreen, which this one I don't think will be but I just like it, I think it's cool. Okay, next up, she's being camera shy, is the compass plant, Stiphon something, Ophigium solarneum, I can't say it, but it's another plant with really cool Surprise. foliage. It's just kind of been the theme of my week. Camera won't focus, won't stop raining, and now that I'm filming, I keep getting text messages, but my phone's been quiet all day. That's okay though, like I was saying. Really cool foliage, 
even more so when you can actually see it uh, on camera. This guy is a little bit lopsided and wonky, but it will straighten out, stiffen up. Flowers are kind of sunflower-like, like you can see right there in the picture. And let me go ahead and read the description to you. A tall, sturdy plant with large, deeply cut basil leaves that look like huge pen oak leaves. Yeah, I could see that. Large yellow sunflower-like flowers bloom in loose spikes in summer on stiff stems to nine feet tall. This plant adds form and texture to the landscape. Yeah, I mean, I'd believe that, especially when it straightens out and stiffens up a little bit. Exposure, these guys like sun, full sun. They'll get 48 to 84 inches tall, that's pretty big, and 12 to 36 inches wide. Grows easily in full sun and average soil tolerates drought and poor soil. Use in perennial borders, native gardens, prairies, and wildlife meadows. Doesn't really talk about the things that it benefits, but that's okay, it's pretty. Oh, I just felt a raindrop, I have to hurry up. Next up is this wild bergamot, which is Monarda biscolosola? No, 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 fistulosa. How, how cool is that? What a pretty plant, right? Yeah, it's all, it's all up there. Well, that's a little bit better. There we go. Finally fixed that. So, like I was saying, this is a Monarda, the wild bergamot Monarda fruit fistuloso, fistulos, fistip, whatever. So, lavender flowers are excellent nectar sources for hummingbirds and butterflies. The gray green foliage is aromatic. Long summer bloom period. Yeah, so sounds like a Monarda. And just like all the other Monardas, full to part shade, full sun to part shade, I should say. 24 to 48 inches tall, 18 to 24 inches wide. That's pretty tall. That's a nice tall Monarda. So in dry to medium wet, well-drained soil, plants need good air circulation. Does require deadheading if you want to prolong the bloom season. So that's good to know, which makes sense because I'm pretty sure this is a species. I don't think this is a hybrid, but I, I don't know that for sure. It's color and contrast to the border of the garden, herb gardens, wild garden, native plant gardens, meadow and net. Okay, so basically they just said it's pretty. Doesn't talk about like who benefits from it, but it's a Monarda. Bees love Monardas, and that's what I'm all about. Bees, butterflies, hummingbirds. That's what that's what these are for. Okay, now it's kind of focusing on this indigo bush. Not really. You still have to say though, the indigo bush, which just, it's not, the camera's just, it's not behaving. I'm switching back to my other camera because it is starting to drizzle and this one isn't focusing anyway. So the quality is gonna go down, but at least things will be in focus. So I'm gonna do that right now. That's better. You know, this is a really good camera, but it's just not behaving today. I think that actually might be because the condensation that it was getting, which I talked about earlier in the vlog, and I did something you're never supposed to do, and I used my shirt. It was a nice, like, soft fabric, but still, I used my shirt to wipe the lens. So I think now I need to clean the lens. So maybe, maybe that's what was going on there. I, I don't know. But hey, at least we can see these plants. They're a little bit grainy, but that's all right indigo bush what i was trying to say i think is going to be my favorite out of all of these uh but i don't know the prairie dock that's a pretty cool these are actually all really neat plants the sensitive fern is like i mean it's cool it's a fern but these three right here the prairie dock the indigo bush and then this guy in the back right there those are gonna be really cool it's just nice to have a few things around that are familiar to the wildlife that's that's the whole reason that i like to add a few things every year to the native area okay but with that being said hope y'all enjoyed another sloppy weekly vlog where some things happened and ultimately it's just it's just a lot of talking just hanging out garden tours coming up update on the orchids I have some planter videos I'm going to, in the month of July, try and get back to uploading three videos during the week and then have the weekend vlogs. That's four videos a week. I just needed some time to just kind of chill. Everything from the wedding a few vlogs ago, a few weeks ago, I don't live in vlogs. A few weeks ago, I just, I wanted to sit back and just kind of enjoy things and then the weather wasn't behaving. Blah, 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 blah. Everything's good now. I've got my energy back. I've relaxed and I'm looking forward to getting things going again. So I hope everybody's doing well. Like I always say, thumbs up helps so much and I really appreciate them. Subscribe as well, because I do upload multiple times a week. My social media stuff is down below. Down in the, in the roots of the video, you can follow me. I follow you back and we look at each other's plant pictures. That's a lot of fun. And uh, yeah. If you're your new subscriber, welcome. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so that it notifies you, because if you don't do that, apparently YouTube just isn't going to tell you about the videos, even though you've subscribed. I don't know what that's about. It's been going on for a while. So 
Don't forget to the notification bell because I do upload multiple times a week like I said before. As always, I like to send out a special thank you to everybody on the weekend vlogs. Thank you all for being such a positive part of my life. I do appreciate it a lot. Things haven't really been stressful. It's just, you know, life is kind of like this. And right now it's been a little bit like that. And that's okay. I'm not afraid of that because it always goes back up. Nothing's wrong. It's just moods. Maybe I'm just, maybe I'm just moody right now. I don't know. But I'm not, I'm not upset about it. But you all help with that. So thank you very much. I'm trying to spend time with nature, spend time outside, exercising, relaxing, just having some inner peace. There's something about gardening that just soothes my soul, sitting outside with the plants and the animals and just, it's just nice. And having you all being part of that is really nice too. So like I was saying, thank you so, 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 so much.